what is up what is up everybody it is your boy sk i'm tapping in with you live after a tough loss man and we're gonna get down to things we're gonna tap into these stats see what really happened what's really going on with this team and what we need to be concerned about after falling to 10 and 3. let's get to it What's up, y'all? What's going on? It's your boy, SK. Thank you guys for tapping in. <sighs> it's one of those Sundays, man. One of those Sundays where it's just... It just... It was... It's frustrating, man. You don't like losing like that. Um, And it caught up with us. We've been kind of skating along this whole season with kind of getting by. You know, we're not going to play our best ball. We're going to struggle, you know, two out of the, the four quarters, second and third quarter. We're going to struggle, but we're going to find a way to get it done at the end of the day. And you know what? We almost had the chance to do that today. But we dug ourselves in a little too far of a hole. And the Minnesota Vikings fall to 10 and three. Let's get to these comments. What's up, Josh? Obviously, first comment coming up. I don't blame you. Fire Donna Shell. I know we're going to get a lot of those today, and we'll tap on that. What's up, Jim? Skull, still skull, baby, still skull. Uh, Josh, again, thank you guys for tapping in. Again, absolutely. Uh, Josh says, we can't expect to win giving up four over 400 yards a game, no defensive adjustments. We just let golf go off. That, that's the thing. Our our pass rush seems like it's non-existent at this point now. Uh, we started the season really good. Zadarius is getting a bunch of pressures, which I think he still may be leading the league in pressures as we speak. But we had zero sacks today. We didn't get after Jared Goff. He was back there. He was far too comfortable for the majority of the game. And he, he lit us up. He absolutely lit us up. Uh, but even with all that, we still had an opportunity, uh, but our offense just took too long to get going, man. And we're going to get into that. I, I have a few things I want to touch on with that. Um, Dave, what's up, Dave? Skull. Uh, Jim says the defense didn't show up. The defense, it seems like defense doesn't show up the majority of the season. Sorry, that was my alarm. Uh, it just feels like the defense doesn't show up for the majority of the season, man. Um, and then it, it takes our offense to come in and, and save the day. And today it, it didn't work. Now, <clears throat> one thing I can say that I, I may be, I'm not going to say happy. Obviously, you're not going to be happy after a loss. But, um, but one thing you're kind of, you know, like, all right, well, we got it out the way. We got that game out of the way to where we didn't get away with having a subpar game. We had a subpar game today. And that reflects directly to the coaching staff, in my opinion. Sure, you can blame some of the players, but I'm looking directly at, obviously, number one, Ed Donichel. Ed Donatel. Ed Donichel, that's his name. We're not, you got to earn your name back, Ed. I'm sorry. You got to earn your name back. Uh, I think we're all very well aware that it isn't the defensive roster. Um, it's obviously the scheme. It's the play calling. Who knows? We're not used to having a 3-4 defense here in Minnesota. We're used to having that 4-3 defense. We haven't had a 3-4 defense since, what was it, 85, 86? So there's going to be some adjustment period. But we've gotten to the point where it's like, okay, well, um, we got to see something. And instead of our defense getting better, it feels like our defense is getting worse, if not staying the same. So we got to see some production out of this defense. Yes, obviously, situationally, which today we weren't good situationally at all. I believe the Lions went, what was it, 7 for 15 on third down. 7 for 15 on third down. It's about 
Um, it's not good. Not good. Uh, we couldn't get off the field. Lions did what they want on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, what's up, Justin? Justin said he's going to be in shortly. Sounds good. Tap in for that. Everybody hit that share button. Hit that like button for me, guys. I greatly appreciate it. Again, Jim, Bowman, Josh Pierman, Dave Thibodeau. Thank you for tapping in. I appreciate it, guys. Uh, but let's get to these stats real quick. <clears throat> and I'm going to get down to things, and then Justin's going to hop in here, and then we may have a rap hop in a little later. Um, but first thing I always look at, third down percentage vikings 4 of 10 40 percent which isn't it's not terrible our offense wasn't necessarily terrible on third down uh but the detroit lions seven for 15 fourth down conversions both teams went one for two uh total yards vikings 416 lions 464 vikings allowing four sacks we got four sacks on the day one of those sacks coming from that Dalvin Cook um, <clears throat> pop pass that we tried to get off. And look, we can sit here and say it was a terrible call. Let's never do it again. But if we if it works, we're sitting here saying, oh, what a clever and cool call by, uh, by Kevin O'Connell. So I'm not going to sit here and question that particular play call by Kevin O'Connell. You take that risk by calling that play call. Every team... That makes that the Tennessee Titans run that play all the time. Not, I'm not going to say all the time. Seems like they run it two to three times a season with Derrick Henry because so many times teams just want to come and flood that goal line defense so Derrick Henry doesn't get in. He just has an easy little pop pass over the top. I'm not opposed to that play call. They were selling out on our run today. We had 22 total rush yards. Dalvin Cook... Finish with 23 yards. Alexander Madison, negative one. 23 rush yards from Dalvin Cook. They were not going to allow Dalvin Cook to run the ball, plain and simple. And it showed. And one thing that frustrated me the most, that just it grinded my gears. It took so long for Kevin O'Connell to get out of this, we got to run the ball. We got to run the ball. And I get it. I'll be the first one to tell you. We need to run the ball. We need to pair this run game with the pass game. We need to be more balanced. I'm 100% there for that. But at the same time, if it's not working, you got to move on. And it wasn't working. It wasn't working early. It wasn't working late. It didn't work at any point in this game. But Kevin O'Connell continued to try and run the ball. So when we started throwing the ball around, said, okay, we got the pass game going. Let Kirk cook. That was, that was really my motto midway through the third quarter. Let Kirk cook. Kirk looked great today. He looked great. Pressure and all. Kirk looked great today. But we took so long to get out of this we gotta get dalvin going stage we if it's not working we gotta move on we cannot continue to just sit there and try and run into a brick wall and that's exactly what we were doing that was the most frustrating part for me in this game most frustrating part it wasn't the the chandon sullivan roughing the power or the uh uh, unsportsmanlike, whatever the hell it was when golf was trying to slide on that third down, giving him a first down. It wasn't the late third down conversion to Panay Sewell. It wasn't, it wasn't any of that. It was Kevin O'Connell deciding to continue to run at a brick wall over and over and over again, and only getting a total of 23, 22 total rushing yards uh today but i'm gonna bring justin in real quick what's up justin that was pathetic that I mean, was a disgrace <sighs> i just got off my channel and i went on a rant so everybody shameless plug but when we're done go to purple and go for days <laughs> it's only a nine minute short he just get, like, like, comment, and subscribe to the Purple Code, Purple Code backup page on Facebook. Go call Ronali's Pizza and Pasta, swing by Nautical Bowls, all of that. But having eat, said eat your that, sorrows away, I'm going to say it like this. You just wasted 
Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson doing their best Dante Culpepper, Randy Moss impression. You just wasted the best performance, in my opinion, of Kirk Cousins' season for sure. And in a possibly, while. And possibly the five-year seasons he's been here because what have we always asked of Kirk Cousins prior to this season? You can't have everything around you perfect. Yep. You're not going to have the Dallas Cowboys offensive line, two Pro Bowl receivers, a Pro Bowl running back, and a number one defense. I'm going to get to Ed Donatell in the defense in a second. <laughs> but Kirk Cousins overcame so much today. Yes, He, he couldn't does. overcome the pathetic defensive performance, and he couldn't overcome the number one reason they lost this game, and that's Kevin O'Connell outsmarting himself. He tried yep. to be the smartest guy in the room, we going to get to some of this, <laughs> but props to Kirk Cousins. I know rap always got to try to stir the pot about grade eight versus hate eight and all this other stuff. <laughs> yeah. If any fool comes on these airwaves or anywhere else no. in my vicinity that tries to say that Kirk Cousins did anything but give his best, his very best, I'm sorry. But you just wait. You're not going to get that kind of performance out of Cousins all the time. He ain't Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen, and you wasted it. You wasted it. So I'm sorry, but everybody else not named Jefferson Cousins, y'all need to look at yourselves in the mirror and say, wow, those two guys brought it today and the rest of us didn't. So yeah. that's my opening rant. Go ahead. And and But that slides right in with what I was just discussing. That's Kirk Cousins throwing for, over, for 400 yards. And this was the game we've all been waiting for from yes. Kirk. This was the game. We've, we've, we've been waiting all season long for Kirk. We need a 350-plus yard game and three touchdowns, and we need Kirk to go off, win or lose. And that's exactly what we got today, and it ended up being a loss. But with all that, with Kirk putting up over 400 yards, having an absolute stellar game, that's also with Kevin O'Connell choosing to run into a brick wall for the majority of the first half when the pass game was working. Yep. That it was again, it was so extremely frustrating to see that over and over and over again for, to where we're just sitting here and saying, let Kirk do his thing. Kirk Kirk looked great from start to finish in this game when you gave him the opportunity to drop back. Yep. I don't th- I don't think I saw one inaccurate ball from no. Kirk today. If I don't think go- I saw one. Yeah, I think you could go through that game film and probably say, oh, look at this one or two plays that Kirk wasn't perfect. There have Mm -hmm. been times where the Kirk Cousins stands will accuse me and others that, you know, kind of sort of iffy, wishy-washy on Kirk to say, boy, he airmailed TJ Hawkinson on this play where he had him wide open or this, that, whatever else. You will not find that today. You will not find a single play. And if you do, it's because you looked at the Zabruder film And you're just looking for something to blame him on. Because today he played his heart out. He played his butt off. And this team let him down. Now, there have been other times last year where it's just like, well, the defense let him down. Yeah, well, you only scored 16 points against the Cowboys at home. Don't talk to me about the defense in that scenario. But in today's scenario, Kirk Cousins balled out. He gave you that game statistically that we've been looking for. I mean, Jared Goff and Kirk Cousins are kind of the same guy. They went back and forth toe-to-toe like it was Josh Allen and – Patrick Mahomes. Why? Because these defenses are both garbage. But yep. <clears throat> honestly, you, you, Justin Jefferson, how good is this guy? I mean, we know how good he is, but how good is this guy? And on top of that, he got robbed of about 30 more yards. Yes. And the touchdown we'll get to that too. We'll get on to that, that, on that last cat. I, dude, like you got to let that as a ref. And I know this is kind of going off, you know, topic a little bit because we're still discussing how Kirk Cousins had an amazing game today. Right. But as a ref, if it's that close, you got to let, let that it go. play go on because you can always overturn it later on if he did step out. Correct. And just looking at that replay one time, it was obvious his heel wasn't touching the ground Correct. and he wasn't out of bounds. Now, that probably wasn't going to change the outcome of this game. Right. But at the same time, JJ should probably have 250 yards. Now, though he already broke the franchise record, but going back to Kirk, man, it, this is one thing to where – Hats off to Kirk. Hats, hats off, off to Kirk. Again, we already know the national media isn't going to ever give Kirk credit, regardless of – until he wins a Super Bowl, until he does something extravagant and over the top is when he's going to get credit. So – 
in this instance, this was an opportunity for Kirk to get that justification from not the national media per se, right? but just our fan base. There's still fans out there that still consider Kirk the problem of this team. Right. And I, I, I don't get it. And me and you, Justin, I'm kind of more middle of the pack. You may be leaning more of like, you know, I'm more of numbers guy. Kirk is good, but I want to see, you know, the finances match the production blah, blah, or right. the wins, blah, 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 blah. But we're both labeled kind of guys that aren't necessarily Kirk fans. But this game right here is the type of game that the coaching staff, the play calling, defensive and offensive side of the ball robbed Kirk Cousins of his moment. Yeah. It robbed you, him of his moment in his own house to win a division for the first time. It robbed him of having one of those great games, everything, everything. Yep. Yep. And th- there was a few times, this is a good point by Ron Allen that I'm going to point out. It said, old line is still vulnerable. We did have not only Christian Darasaw out today and Blake Brandale got hurt. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know if you have an update on that injury, Justin. No, Blake Brandale did go down. Um, I'm not sure how serious that is. Um, but we also didn't have Garrett Bradbury today. And that that showed. We all asked for Garrett Bradbury to be replaced, to be benched for somebody. We didn't care who. And Austin Schlotman came in, and there was a few plays where it's obvious he wasn't prepared and he missed an, an assignment and he either gave up a sack or ended up Kirk throwing the ball away. So not mm-hmm. having Garrett Bradbury – cost us a few plays, cost us a first down or two. So um, I'm not using injuries and it, as an excuse by any means nope. for this loss because you're a 10-2 football team coming into this game. You want to be respected as a Super Bowl contender because we've been – I mean, going into this game, me, you, I think we all felt we're being extremely disrespected regardless of how our games have gone. We're still a 10-2 football team. We should be considered as a Super Bowl contender. This game right here, although the Lions are a very good football team, me and you have been on the Lions kind of not bandwagon, but you know, train of saying that, hey, they're they're a good team. They're gonna be playoff viable. Right. You know, this is one of those games that you have to have if you want to be considered a Super Bowl contender. Correct. And regardless of, of Harrison Smith being out and Christian Darisol being out. We didn't have Harrison Smith for the first game. So we should have used that as an excuse now. So you got to find a way to win this game if you want to be considered a Super Bowl contender. So I'm going to warn you guys now, everybody watching right now, do not expect the Vikings to, to, you know, stay in the top 10 in the ranks. Expect them to drop a few spots in the ranks and be disrespected again and be not talked about. So, which I mean, is it's totally fine. We got a semi-short week with the Saturday game coming up next week at home against the Indianapolis Colts. So that bids well for us, but I'll be there. Oh, you're going to the game? I'm going. Nice. So on one hand, I'm trying to not be too mad because then maybe we get to see them clinch the division at home. And maybe if they had clinched today, they would have done the Dallas thing where like after they did at Buffalo, they didn't show up the next week. So maybe my hard earned money won't be going for now. But at the same time, it is still like, like I said, I'm irritated that they lost this game. I'm irritated that they lost to the Lions. And I'm irritated that Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson showed the world how good they were, and it was in a loss. The, you know, so uh, which one you talk about first? You want to talk about uh, Donatello or O'Connell? Because I got some for both of them. Which one you want to go with? Real side note before we do talk about that. Something to keep an eye on. We did lose today. The 49ers are up 28 to nothing at halftime against the Bucks right now. I was going to get to that. Who's been saying that since uh, since the Saints game? We did a post game show. Somebody said, "Watch out for San Francisco." Who was that? Oh, it, yeah. it, it, I I hate San Francisco. They're very <laughs> extremely well coached. I I give them all the credit in the world. I just hate how the freaking national media just sucks them off every chance they get. True. I can't stand it. But look, right now. If they, I mean, I'm sure they're going to come away with this win, 28 to nothing. They have, you know, quote unquote, the best defense in the league. This, this is looking like a win for the San Francisco 49ers. They're only a game behind the they're Minnesota Vikings for the number two seed. Now that doesn't change the fact we're not going to get a buy with the number two seed, but 
that that could change some things in the second round. Instead of us possibly having two home games in the playoffs, that could switch us, us only having one home game and we're going to San Francisco in the second round, which hey, yeah, bye bye. That's up the street for me. I might actually go that game, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but no, man. That that's something you got to keep an eye on. But I, I think we, we kind of touched on the offensive side, and I think the main subject here and the main thing we need to touch on is defense and perfect timing. Rap just came in, mm-hmm. and you know, you know what, you know what? Before before we get to the defense, Justin, we're gonna need Rap to admit something, right? I don't know. Do we? I th- I'm I trying think, to remember. I think Rap needs to admit to something here. Rap. All right, all right. We all Lions fans, man. We'll admit to it, man. We're, no, we're, 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 we're not blue, Lions we're fans. Code, man. No, no, I, no I, I, need, <laughs> I need you to say that SK, Justin, you guys Mike. were 100%. Mike, you guys were 100% right in saying yeah. the Detroit Lions are a viable playoff team. Yeah, I think um I think they are a good team though, for sure. They they a good team, you know what I mean? We just we I mean honestly, like I just think that we're we're not that good of a football team, man. I'm being dead ass serious now, man. Like I'm on that vibe. Like we really not, bro. Like the way we <laughs> lost today, bro, like I'm being dead serious. Like this shit makes me mad today, bro. Like this this loss makes me upset, and this is why. Because and I know y'all been talking about it. I actually been tapped in with y'all, but I had to handle some business, right? Real quick though, before we get into these coaches, real quick, because I heard y'all, right? I called Dave keep I you and you and Dave, you were on live with Justin, I mean um Dave earlier when I called this a right. must win game. I like agree with you. Dave is so specific on oh no, it's not a must win because we have five other opportunities. Dog, listen. That don't mean nothing. Yeah, we have five more opportunities, but we controlled our destiny and something was on the line today and we lost. So that just lets me know, like when it becomes playoff time, when there's some can we say, oh, well, it's playoff game, but it's not a must win because we have next season. You know what I mean? To to make the playoffs or to make the Super Bowl. No, today should have been a win. We should have locked up the the playoff spot and we should have locked up the division. That's just what it should have been. But that, and, that's my rant, man. And that, that's what we talked about last night, though, Rap. What's what's what we said going into this game, regardless of what you felt about the Lions going into this game. This was like a mini like playoff scrimmage. This was mm-hmm. kind of going to be a playoff feel. The Detroit Lions, they sold extra standing room only tickets. You know, they they feel like they're in playoff contention, which they absolutely are now. So this had a playoff vibe. The division was on the line. You could have clinched the division today. And And now and now, like you said earlier, now the 49ers are on our tail. Now the 49ers are on our tail. And but this ain't a must win. No, this wasn't a must win. No, you know, we could lose. We could lose two or three more. We'll be all right. I'm well. Let's not say that, but <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna say. I was being it was, sarcastic. I was being sarcastic. I'm well. not gonna say this game was a must win by any I means. Am. Like we we dropped the game. We dropped the game. It it is what it is. We got a little room to to work with, but that's not the mentality you want. At the same time, though, like we. Oh, did SK freeze on us? Uh, I was going to say, is it me or is it SK? Had, no, this go. had the oh, NFC North is. divisional title on the line. So, right. you you know, you got to come out with that mentality. Let's go get this divisional title. Yeah. And it, it didn't seem like, at least on the defensive side and at least schematic-wise, offensively, we weren't prepared for that. Yeah. And, and let's be real, the Detroit Lions – are a team that no one is going to want to play. No one wants the Detroit Lions in the playoff. I'm telling you right now, because they're one of those teams that just throws caution to the wind. They don't mm-hmm. on third down with the game on the line, they threw the ball to an offensive tackle. They did not have any F's left to give at that point. Yeah. That, those are one of those teams where it's I do I want no parts. I do not want to see the Detroit Lions again this season. I do not. No, thank you. So Detroit's one of those teams that's just scrappy. You want to see no parts of like if it's a close game, it's one of those teams that could that could, you know, find a way to win just like we are. They're the same type of team we are. Bad defense. And that's what I'm saying now because of because of not winning today. 
even though realistically it's probably not going to happen, but yet we have to wait again next week for we have to hope that the Lions lose and we mm. win on Saturday. We we now we no, don't no, need, no. I, we only yeah, need right. one. Don't, don't the Lions play. need to lose? Don't the Lions no, need to lose? No, we only need one. We only need. Oh, yeah. so we just need to win. We just need to win next week. One the more only win way, on the, the only, season. The only way the Lions can win the division is we have to lose every game and they have to lose every win every game. The, the we need one thing to not happen. So it's not even yeah. about watching the scoreboard. But to your point, right? But but yeah. still, yet yeah, though, they're still in it. They're still in it. Um you know, mathematically, even though not realistically, right. but mathematically, like how I tell y'all with the, with the graphic, you know, when y'all say they're in yeah. the hunt, I'm like, you know, you, you could say they're in the hunt, but realistically though, they probably not going to make the playoffs. But then again, they could easily win out though. Cause their schedule doesn't look that hard to be real. Right. So they so probably you, were worried about us. Are you calling the next game a must win against the Colts? <laughs> Nah, hell nah, nah, nah. No games a must win, man. According to Dave, you know what I mean? No games a must win. It don't matter. Okay. Only games a must win is the playoff. The, the playoff game, man. That's it. In my opinion, there's context to what yes. kind of that's must That's ultimately win where is we landed. Is yeah, that's so, where, like, next, like, I look at next game as not. I just looked at this game as it only because they're in our division. Like, if, if we were playing the Colts today and it was, okay, the Lions are playing – whoever and they had to lose and we had to win i wouldn't have called it that i just called it that because we controlled our destiny today we could have just gone and put the nail in the coffin today you know we could have got the lions out the way and just mm -hmm. took the division you know they're in our division so that's why i called it that i mean i know like like dave and and they were saying i know mathematically it's not a must win because obviously we're going to win the division i mean if we if we lose the division something horrible just has we need to fire everybody including that donatelle you know, I, mean, I mean, including I'm, Kevin O'Connell. I'm not going to call next game a must win. But no, what no. what I do need to see, that this is the game I want to see us really put it on somebody. I know we've been calling for it all season long. Of we, need to, we need to beat a team a certain way. That's not. You know what, right? It, no, you, you. Hey, see, look, and I've been with you. I've been with you. You've been on my vibe lately, bro. No, right. Like you, you. Th hey. This is this is a early. This is an early feeling, an early vibe for me going okay. into this game. And you okay. know, you you've seen all my predictions this right. season. This right. Colts game, I. Th this is gonna be the game we come out and we have an attitude and we feel extra disrespected. Right. I mean, you, after coming off a game like this, to where it finally bit us in the ass. Mm -hmm. The way we've been playing all season long, it finally bit us in the ass, and it and it came back to us, and we lost. Now, granted, it it, it wasn't a two possession game. I mean, a right. one possession game. We lost by what eleven points. We're still nine and zero. We're still nine and zero in one possessions game. One possessions games, but that game was just a synopsis of every single game that we've had this year. And we mm -hmm. just came out on the losing side. So and it's a shame because Kirk Cousins threw for his 400 yards and we just talked you know, about Justin, that, Justin Jefferson, you know, to to the Kirk stands. That's all that matters today. You know, that as long as Kirk threw for 400 yards, you know, the, the and, and we had to throw a lot, you know, what I mean, but they had an amazing game, though. I don't I don't really knock Kirk Cousins. They played really good. Kirk and JJ actually played really good today. You know what I mean? Like no, I, the defense, I, the defense didn't help them. But I still also put blame on them a little bit because they are captains of the team. And I look at it like this, when you with the defense held up at the beginning of the game, we had three opportunities where mm -hmm. we held them. We were tied at seven. We could have went up by seven. We could have went up by 14 and yet we stall out and play with no sense of urgency. Only time we play with a That's sense of urgency it. on offense is if the team goes up on us. Yep. Isn't it weird that if a team scores that. a touchdown, yep. then we all of a sudden go down and score a touchdown? Mm -hmm. yep. It's like, what the heck? I don't get that, man. We, we got to continue to play with that that sense of urgency regardless of the score. We can't, you know, scoreboard watch. I feel like that's what we're doing. It's awesome to be situational masters. I, I love that part. But you yeah. also got to fill in what's in between those situations. Right. So you have – you're not in those situations every week. So, okay, so Dave, Dave I'm going to clear this up real quick, Dave. So Dave it's says a must win, but I'm it's, clear it's a must win, but it's not a must win. <laughs> when I say it's a must win, but it's not a must win, because there's, there's two different ways of looking at it. Obviously, it's not a must win when you look at the record-wise. We – we got we got the division wrapped up unless we lose out and the, the Lions win out, which is a very, very small percentage that happens. But when you look at the mentality of a team and the mentality of, of a locker room, 
dropping two games in a row isn't a good look. Isn't isn't a good feeling for the hey, locker hey, room. Hey, SK, no, you don't got to explain. We all we always got next year, man. <laughs> we always got next year man you know what i mean we always got next year sk don't don't waste your breath explaining it. dave is the type that don't even like to use never like if kirk cousins does a run where he like puts his shoulder down and we say you know kirk never does things like that he'll say oh you use the word never he does that he does it a lot you know what i mean like you can't argue with dave with shit like that. don't worry tap in at 9 15 i'm on dave's head bro Tap right, what's in up? at 9 15. What's up, <laughs> Lemmy? Thanks. You, thank you for tapping in on YouTube. He says Ed Donatel has to go, y'all. If we <laughs> all did. want the same thing, then change is needed ASAP. Every free QB that has played us has has had a career game. We don't have the players yeah. for this three-four scheme. I I'm not against having the three-four scheme in Minnesota. Um, I knew there was gonna be some issues and some struggles right but this is this is strictly play calling man yeah. like it's obvious we we have our corners lining up 15 yards off the ball on third and fives just like it's the thing we outside of the culture switch with kevin o'connell and zimmer we we wanted to improve our defense our defense didn't improve at all it, at all it, it may be worse like I think so i think so i'm not so, liking this shit and the different the difference in today's game look both teams gave up a crazy amount yards. of passing yards yeah it, it was the run game detroit ran for 134 yards on the ground and we ran for 22 22 20 on 17 carries and we keep handing it off and we keep i mean that that's just working a lot you know what i mean i seen your tweet i seen your tweet sk where you said keep handing it off so you can keep running to a brick wall that's working out for you like it, yeah, i felt the same man. exact way bro like dog like at some point you have to realize like listen quit giving the ball to dalvin you keep throwing for big chunk yards over and over again why not just keep on doing that we know that the lions have one of the worst passing defenses just like us so why not do what they're doing you saw what they did they just threw all over us why not return the favor i mean we kind of did but we started too late you know what i mean we kept handing right. the ball off to cook for what for what man pass it to him or something Shit. Here's the, here's the thing with the defense and Justin, you've been quiet. I'm gonna need you to talk after. Oh, well, quiet. you know, I ain't interrupting y'all too. I mean, this, this, I'm, still, I'm looking for my popcorn. My bad, know. man. My but, bad, no, man. I got a no. vent, man. I'm I'm looking at this defense, and if you're if you're giving up 400 plus yards throughout the game, anyways, why not get exotic and throw some blitzes at the offense? Why not? You know, send a corner blitz from time to time. Why not go out there and have fun? Like, not saying that the players aren't having fun, but mm -hmm. if you're going to give up that type of yardage anyways, why not at least send pressure and bang up the quarterback a little bit? Like, outside of it being situationally, you got to look at the game in a whole. When people when, – when teams come in to play the Minnesota Vikings, one of the first things they look at, and this is not a shot at Kirk by any means, this – this is pretty much any team. When they go, go in and, and play a, another team, they say, I want to come in and I want to bang up the quarterback throughout the entire game to where by the end of that game, he's going to fill us. He's going to know that rush is coming, that blitz is coming, and he's going to get hit every time he drops back. It seems like we don't have that mentality. No. It seems like we're just kind of like, oh, well, you know, we're just going to – we're just going to try and hold them in the red zone. If if we don't, we're just going to come down and tie the game. Like right. well, I'm telling you is. right now, too, y'all, like most teams that we play against, like I and I go and watch their fan base apart. Nobody really worries about Kirk like that. Like only yeah. it's really only Vikings fans that think Kirk Cousins is Kirk, Cousins, which he, he we, we believe right. he's a decent quarterback. But other teams mm -hmm. are like, man, we need to stop. Dalvin Cook and stop yeah. Justin Jefferson. Like there's, Kirk Cousins they're is not still on the, the Dalvin Cook thing. Yeah, like Kirk Cousins is not in the conversation. Like nobody's scared of Kirk Cousins like taking over and just dashing him, which he could though. You know what I mean? He really could. Like today, I heard y'all earlier. Like today, it's a shame that the defense allowed what they allowed because this was a great game for him and JJ. And I, I would I would have loved for them to get a win and him to be able to wear the shirt and the hat. You know, but yeah. that's but that's the Kirk Cousins thing though. He always comes up short, whether and you can't blame it all on him, obviously, because it's a it's a team sport. But guess what? When he has comebacks in the fourth quarter, we say, oh, Kirk Cousins leads the NFL in, in fourth quarter comebacks. Well, 
we also have to remember too that the defense helped him to be able to come on a fourth quarter comeback too so we got to yeah. just play it fair you feel me it's mm-hmm. a team sport at the end of the day we can't pick and choose when we want to praise this dude man yeah but there's well, nothing about today you're gonna say no. is about Kirk, no right? hell no hell no there's and y'all there know i'd be looking for reasons i'd be looking for reasons too <laughs> i was watching him close today too because i was wanting to bash him but mm-hmm. i can't though he he, I, he actually played a good we game. literally i literally can't pick out one play to where nah, he played a good i saw game. kirk cousins where it's like oh damn come on Kirk. yeah he played a good not one today well, I, give him, I give him his respect today to what you were saying sk it's like in baseball if it's a three two count and you're gonna strike out swing your bat and at yeah. least go down swinging go right out now swinging. they are striking out by watching and hoping that their pitcher is going to throw a ball outside and yep. that you can take your first base it's as simple as this we understand that he probably doesn't have all of the pieces that he needs but at yeah. some point who cares you okay so you don't have all the pieces you need to run this system then yeah. figure something else out run a yeah. different system or run a hybrid of the system that you want with some modifications to it but yeah. just running the same thing over and over again hoping that you're going to be able to just hang on i'll say it again rap maybe you didn't hear us say it that's five straight games and four out of those five straight games over 400 yards on defense given up yep. and four mm-hmm. out of those fives 450 plus yards that yeah. There's no longer at the well. If we blitz too much, we we might get burned. You getting burned regardless. So do yeah. something to give yourself a chance to come up with a play. But right now I'm they're not. not doing it. And hey, honestly, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go, no, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Jay. Go ahead, Dave. My bad. Go ahead. What I was gonna say is, I started this earlier. We haven't got back to it. To me, the biggest fault of this game is Kevin O'Connell. It's not the defense. I'm not saying that the defense yeah. is off the hook. I'm not saying that the defense doesn't get blamed. They do. But to me, two things. One, Kevin O'Connell. You art smarted yourself on a whole bunch of play calls we'll get back to. But most importantly, you are the head coach. You need to go to your defensive coordinator and say, hey, I hired you to take care of this defense because you know defense, I know offense. Mm -hmm. But we got to figure something else out. Let's Mm -hmm. sit down together. If you need me to give you some advice on what I see as an offensive personnel person for what I see as your weaknesses, whatever the case but we need to do some collaborations. We need to do something, but you need to do something different than just sitting back there and letting these guys pick you apart. So to me, another part of this is Kevin O'Connell's got to say something to Donatel. Be like, no, this ain't going to work anymore, man. He probably has. Yeah. And to answer your question, Dave, when you say always comes up short, but leads the NFL and comebacks all in the same breath. Yes. He might lead the NFL in, in, in comebacks, but what has it won him? He had, he ne- he doesn't even have a, N- a NFC North championship yet since he's been in the Minis- at the Minnesota Vikings and today he could have changed that narrative he could have changed that narrative no, today. today's not the even day. though it wasn't today's his fault but still today. he could have he could today's not the day to go on the court okay, today rap, rap. I love, bro, you're not my, the day you still my came dog, up you short. tell me still came what up tell, short, you though. tell me what Kirk Cousins could have done different today no nah, he couldn't have done nothing different today no, I'm just okay. I'm, I'm reaching I'm reaching I'm reaching. <laughs> today is not the day. Dave, I'm Dave, gonna go here. for days, but not today, though. <laughs> Dave, <laughs> Dave's over here getting them riled up. Nah, Dave, nah. Dave, 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 nah, I bet I was trolling him earlier, man. Usually yes. Dave ignores me in their show, but he was showing me so much attention earlier. I was like the superstar, so I kept feeding into it. I was about to say, Dave has every right to troll you right now. Yeah, I get I got him worked up earlier. Like, like he was oh paying me gosh. way too much attention. It was funny. So are are we at a point now to regardless of what happens this season outside of us winning a Super Bowl? Yeah. Can we all agree that Donatel's gone after the season? See you mm-hmm. bye. See you bye. Yeah. Regardless yeah. of of the outcome of this year besides Super Bowl. Yeah, I think or I getting think to gone. if we get to a Super Bowl, I will obviously that means the defense probably played decent throughout the playoffs and we found right. a way to get to the Super Bowl. So I think he'd probably stick around at that point. Let me no, make I'm a suggestion. Now I I may be wrong, but Vic Fangio took a year off from coaching, right? Yep. Yep. He's not he's 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 not coaching anywhere at the moment, is he? No, he is not. You're All talking right. about the guy from the um Broncos, isn't it? Former Broncos head coach and, yeah. and Chicago Bears defensive coordinator. Which Ed Donatel is actually the quote unquote protege or whatever you want to call him of Vic, of the Vic Fangio defense because that's what we're running. Here, baby. We're running the Vic Fangio defense here. It's just ran by Ed Donatel. Right. So keep an eye on that. That I know that's kind of like way too early to predict or kind of throw out there, but 
Vic Fangio is available, and uh, I don't I'll say another name. Anybody's too, gonna be hiring him for head coach, Mike Zimmer. No, <laughs> it, 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 bring Mike I don't know Zimmer which, in. I don't know which one will set me off more. Anybody trying to blame Kirk Cousins or anybody trying to talk about bringing Mike Zimmer back? I don't know which <laughs> one of those two would trigger me more. But the name I was going to mention is Ronaldo Hill, and he okay. is the defensive coordinator of the uh, Los Angeles Chargers, and he was with. I think he has some history with Kevin O'Connell because, to your point. If you're going to – it's the old Saul Goodman thing. I know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy. Yeah. If you're going to run the system with a guy who knows the guy and he doesn't do it very well, mm-hmm. then run it with the guy, okay? Yeah. But Ronaldo Hill, he's not going to last uh, much longer with the Chargers, and I think that he would be somebody that Kevin O'Connell will say, okay, I'm going to take you in here. We kind of ran this system, but I think you can do a better job of it because I think you've got a better mindset for it. I don't know. But you're, you're dead on. If you're going to run this system – then run it with the guy who actually is running it, not one of his protégés. Another another thing too, man, not not to stick up for Donatel because I, I definitely think he needs to go. But you know, our personnel doesn't doesn't work well with what he's trying to do either. That's that's the problem. You know what I mean? Like our no linebackers, no our linebackers today. too, and I really getting pressure like that anymore. Like you know, the pressure has slowed down a lot. I mean, it's just you know a lot of things aren't working in his favor man and that's not good you know what i mean it's we're gonna get exposed in the playoffs man. well i'm I, with jim i get i get what he wants to do i get the Ben don't break hey we're gonna let him move the ball but when they get into the red zone we're gonna hold them to field goals or when we have opportunities for turnovers we're gonna get them i mm-hmm. totally get that but that means you gotta make stops in the red zone that yes. means that means you can't give up 450 but why 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 make stops in the red zone but if the offense is going to come out and go three and out though you know what i mean we gotta you you it's like we gotta let them score a touchdown for our offense to show up you know what i mean that's the only way that's the only way we're gonna play you know what i mean that's the only way our offense will play is if they're down man if we're up we ain't gonna play you know? yeah gonna that three and out. that mentality has definitely got to change if that shit gotta change go that's anywhere. one of the most annoying things about this football team to me is that the offense gets ample opportunities to go and take a lead and they don't, you know, like, yeah, no, we, and we've seen it time and time again this season to where we've only scored to when we absolutely need to score. And like, right. Yeah. That's, that's great again, situationally, but let's score when we don't have to get into those situations of us needing to score to stay in a game or to to keep us a uh, a little cushion between us and the opponent. Let's let's try to consistently move the ball and consistently put points on the board. And I'm sure we'd be feeling a whole lot better about being you know ten and three right now. Just how we got there. So look again. Dave said it in the comments. We're still ten and three. Right. What We're you're still- talking about is 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 called building yourself a margin for error. Where if something happens, you're not stuck behind the eight ball needing to out execute and have everything go perfectly for you for the rest of the game. It's just like the season. The Vikings lost today. Was it? Does that mean the season's over? No, No. they built themselves a margin for error. This Mm -hmm. team last year is this team last year never built itself a margin for error like this. So to Dave's point of, okay, it wasn't must win game that or whatever else. The season's not over. All well and good. But you got to do that in the game. You got to do that like they did against Chicago, where they came out and scored three touchdowns on the first three drives. And yeah, Mm -hmm. the Chicago eventually came back and took the lead. And then we went right down the field and scored against them and won the game. But they have not done a good enough job of building themselves a margin for error uh, right now. And they had plenty of opportunities in the first half to do so. Uh, Rap is right on with that. Um, and, And I think that's their biggest issue is they need to do more to be up to not put themselves in a position where they have to be situationally perfect. And and here's the one credit, a little half credit I will give the defense today is that to start this game, I actually felt like we came out pretty good outside of maybe two to three plays where we gave up that big bomb to Jamison Williams. And then we gave up another long one to, I think it was DJ Chark. Right. And there, there's maybe one other play outside of those two or three plays that first half that the defense wasn't necessarily bad. No, it wasn't. It weren't bad. That second half, they just absolutely crumbled. We couldn't get off the field. They were bad situationally today. We Listen, weren't good situationally today. 
First drive, the Lions went three and out. Second drive, they had the two play touchdown big bomb that you just talked about because the Vikings got mm-hmm. turned over on downs and the defense was on their own side of the field. Yep. Next defensive possession, they turned the line over and stopped them on four downs. Then they forced a punt. And then they gave up a touchdown on that one play to their uh, drive because, again, they had a big kickoff or the big punt return. So to yeah. your point, defensively, and then they had to miss field goal towards the end of the half. Okay, th- th- there was that one there as well. Defensively in the first half, did they play perfect? No. Does no. that mean they get let off the hook for letting up those two bomb plays? No. no. But if you had asked anybody going into that game, okay, the Detroit Lions are going to have 14 points up at halftime. You would take that 11 times out of 10 with what our defense is, particularly Mm -hmm. with how it happened and particularly with how many opportunities uh, it gave the offense in the first half that they didn't take advantage of. Yeah, because what was the halftime score? It was 14 to 7. 14 to 7. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And it should have been 14-14 if Dalvin didn't fumble. I'm going to get to that. I'm just waiting on SK to get us back to the offense because I got something for that. Okay, so, yeah, let's get get to the offense. So, obviously, we ended up going for over 400 yards – that was mainly due to Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson. Absolutely no help from the running game and the actual play calling in this game. Justin, I'll, I know you've been waiting to talk about this offense, so I'm going to let you go ahead and rant about this offense. But again, man, Kirk did all he could. Kirk did all he could. I'm going to say this. It's not even about the offense. It's about Kevin O'Connell. He outsmarted himself. That was the title of my video I did. You have been trying to run the ball and have been stuffed left and right. But at the end of it, you have first and goal at the three-yard line where you're down seven points, where your defense has given you an opportunity to stay in this game. Mm -hmm. And you decide to call Dalvin Cook is going to stutter behind the line of scrimmage and then try and throw a jump pass to, uh, to the tight end. Your offensive line has gotten worked to this point. You have done absolutely nothing in the running game. And in such a condensed area, you are asking Dalvin Cook, to mentally make sure he has the handoff, figure out where the guys are coming from, stutter step, and then try and pass the ball. You are giving him too many things to think about in that particular scenario. That's number one. Number two, you score a touchdown to Adam Thielen to cut a 14-point lead down to eight in the middle of the third quarter, and you decide to go for the two-point conversion. Listen, I understand analytics, and I understand that, yes, if it's the middle of the fourth quarter, you do go for two there but it's predicated on the idea that your defense is not going to give up any points for the rest of the game. And you can't have that mentality in the third quarter. Not with this defense, you certainly can't. So guess what? We're chasing that point for the rest of the game. Number three, yes, the referee should not have called J.J. out. There should have been more time on the clock after the Osborne touchdown because of that. But kicking the onside kick with two minutes and 40-some seconds left and two timeouts – and this is not hindsight. I said it at the time. Kick the ball off. Because if you don't succeed in that onside kick, and if your defense gives up, even if they do get a three and out, you're still giving them the opportunity to kick the field goal to take a one possession game to two possessions. There was yeah. nothing that could have been gained. I mean, obviously, recovering the onside kick would have been a gain. But my point is, is that it was not worth the risk to do an onside kick at that point. If it was under two minutes, of course you do it. But that was three particular instances where he completely outsmarted himself trying to be the smartest guy in the room. And that, to me, coupled with he's still the head coach and he needs to talk to Ed Donatel, that, to me, is the biggest takeaway from this game. Kevin O'Connell has been known in this entire season for this culture shift, um, the ability to not beat yourselves. They beat themselves in those instances. Now, yeah. one more time, because I've already had people tweeting at me saying, well, geez, you're letting the defense off the hook. No, I'm not. I'm saying that this team is built on offense. Almost, most of our talent is centered around offense. That has to be the unit. You can't expect the defense to pick you up all the time. This is a game where the offense needed to pick up the defense, and they shot themselves in the foot, and most of the time they shot themselves in the foot was at the direction of play calls or strategic calls by this head coach. I'm not saying he should be fired. I'm not saying bring back Mike Zimmer, but the most blame <laughs> of this game – needs to go on Kevin O'Connell. If we're going to praise him for all the wonderful things Mm -hmm. that have happened thus far this season, kind of like what Rap was saying about Kirk, about comebacks as a team game, if we're going to praise Kevin O'Connell for how he has changed this team and made them situationally better and all those things, he's got to take his heat today. So that's Mm -hmm. my salvo offensively. You kept running into a brick wall. You could not run today. I understand trying to be balanced, but there comes a point 
where you can't just keep running Dalvin Cook into guys 10 times his size. It ain't going mm-hmm. anywhere. So – Oh, too evil. You ain't even funny, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah. bring it back, Zimmer. <laughs> nah, we definitely don't need a. Br- if we would have had Zimmer today, it would have been ugly because we would have kept. We would have been down by twenty points and been still running the ball. You know what I mean? Like we're just I'm, I'm gonna be honest. Run the ball. If I'm not even gonna say continue at. I'm not even gonna start that combo. Run. A stat, uh, established, but you—I know you were gonna say like the Zimmer. No, he got the Lions number. Z- for Z- no, Zimmer's defense would play far better today. Yeah, yeah, they—they they promise probably you. Would. Well, I don't know, man. Because last year, cause, last year, cause though, really, would they? Do what they would they? Would they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the. I'm talking about just pure defensively. We would at least at least got after the quarterback. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I do agree with that. Yes, yes. Who? Why did we have? Who, who's number 90 again? That's the guy from Minnesota. They're from Minnesota Gophers, right? The Golden uh, Gophers. I, I, it's hard to Starts pronounce. Starts with an O, man. right? I seen yeah. him out there a o- lot today. OZ Zawaka for some What's up like with that? Mario Valane? Isn't it? What, what, or Mario Valane? Didn't we? That guy was balling in the uh, in the preseason. What happened? Like, what's up with oh, him? Oh, you talking too? about Luigi? Luigi. There we go. <laughs> he said Luigi. 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 There yeah. we go. Where's bro it's, at? It's one of those preseason cats, man. You, you know, I seen, I seen, we we got our awesome Moa dose today. He was in there quite often. I seen awesome Moa in there quite often. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, it's it's just I don't know. It's it's like we're trying new things. I guess today look like, and I know we have some injuries. You know what I mean? With Harrison Smith would have made a, a slight difference today if he played. Um, I don't think he would have changed the outcome. We still would have took an L today, but I think he okay. definitely would have. So so I'll play. I'll ask y'all this. So there was. Three guys in Garrett Bradbury, Christian Darisaw, and Harrison Smith. Yeah. That if it wasn't a really important game, they probably would have played. Right. If it was a playoff game, they would have played. So, yeah. do you think if those three guys played, it would have changed the outcome of this game? I think if all three of them would have played, yeah. I'm. I don't. I don't think the offensive line was that bad as far as the pass game. Now the run game, yeah. obviously, because they weren't able yeah. to open holes. Terrible. For Cook, but Cook is for some reason too though. Cook's just not hitting holes as hard as he used to either. Like I think, like to me, Cook's running style is changing a little bit. He's he's. It's almost like he's just waiting for a big gap to get open so he can just mosey through it to where. You know, back in the day, he would hit those holes hard, bro, and get yeah. five, six yards, you know, even when it looks like it ain't going for nothing. Resign now it's Madison. Like, yeah, now it's just he just turns his shoulder and takes the hit and takes the loss of yards. Like, he's not even trying. He's making I mean? a business decision. Yeah, he's making a business decision. I think it's because of the injuries over and over again. He wants mm-hmm. to make sure he gets that bag. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because he knows that he's injury prone. So you can just look at you can just tell, man. And and. I mean, he's still fifth in yards and all that. Probably not after today's game, but still, you know, he's, he's still kind of productive if you think about it. But it's like, dog, you got to there. There's too many running backs out here that you can get, like even even like Ty Chandler's and things that we can put in and could have did what you did today. Like you did yeah. what you did today. We can we can pull a running back off the practice squad and would have had the same exact game you had today, if not better. You know what I mean? Because you would have had somebody who was trying to get a job. Yeah. And they would have ran with a lot more intensity. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So what do you think, been. Justin? Do you think those three guys would have changed the outcome of the game today? I mean, maybe a touch. I mean, obviously, Harrison Smith is one of the stalwarts of the defense. Yeah. So maybe, you know, those big bomb touchdown plays don't happen. Um, to, to what I said earlier was that if 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 we're at the point where we're going to say, wow, we sure did miss Garrett Bradbury. <laughs> okay. Hey, Garrett Bradbury's a savage in the run game, though. He is, but at, at some point, you no. Know, injuries. Uh, listen, I got the stats right in front of me. Kirk Cousins had a tackle on that fumble, right? Yeah. He, he had the same amount of tackles yeah, he as Darius Smith. Now. He pulled the Cam Newton, too, now. You don't think I forgot about that shit. That boy uh, definitely we, pulled the Cam Newton. He could have dive on that fucking fumble. He could have died. He could have oh, no, 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 no. got us that ball back. He was acting scared. He sees. Hey, look, if, if if it ain't a playoff game or a Super Bowl on the line, right. I'm cool with my quarterback letting up, letting up. You cool? On that you cool with him playing, 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 doing the Cam Newton? Um, nah, man. Uh, uh-uh. because because check this out. Say Kirk Cousins does dive on that ball and ends up getting hurt, recovers the ball, but ends up getting hurt and is out for the season. How would you feel about that? Shit, Mullins time, baby. Let's get it. No, I'm just tripping. I'm just tripping. Hey, y'all, man, let me let can I can I can I can I get my Kirk time in, man? Damn, boy, y'all keep y'all keep pushing me back. I'm trying to jump off that ledge, man. Y'all keep pushing me back on the land. 
<laughs> here's one thing I do want to to kind of point out and bring up, which man, it I probably shouldn't bring it up because it might be bad for this player, but right. let's not forget Jalen Rager guaranteed a victory this week. <laughs> Yeah, he did. He did. But you know, going right? back to, I think we talked about this last night, right? We did. We did. Yeah, you didn't really agree with it. You don't do that. No, I don't see no big deal in it. Still, especially even if, if you're a guy that's not like the. If if it yeah. was Justin Jefferson that said that, it's right. like okay, Justin Jeff, he's in his bag right now. He's yeah. confident. Go ahead, do you? This is our punt returner slash wide receiver for saying this. Yeah, so but, but his like, teammates, may his teammates give off that vibe. They might have made him confident enough to say I, that. I get it, but that's something you keep to yourself. You do but not you, you give do a not team. Do not tempt the football yeah. gods. Yeah, I feel the you. football gods, and don't give your opponent more bulletin board material, especially a team like the Lions. That anything they can get an emotional advantage on you for, they're gonna take it and run with it. Mm -hmm. And and yeah. I wouldn't be surprised they had that somewhere in their locker room. Uh, this week saying, oh, they're over here guaranteeing victories in our house. We're favorites, blah, 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 blah. So fuck I agree crazy, with man. um Lemmy Smith, too, <laughs> man, saying that Cook fumble was the turning point. That definitely was a big turning. Yes. Point. You know what I mean? Absolutely. That that right there was yeah. the turning point for sure, because if and we would have tied that, that game point. up. Yeah. If, if we would have tied that game up, you know what I mean? Like it would have been a whole different going in the half. We could have probably came well, out. The, I told Dave, Dave was like, yeah, we need to right out of half. We need to go score. And I'm like, bro, we're going three and out right out of half. I can promise you that. <laughs> we're going there, three and out. Like, there was, out. there was multiple game changing plays in this game. The ones that just come to the top of my head is obviously that one we're just talking about right now. The fake yeah. punt that the lions got, the um roughing the passer or um late hit on the quarterback by Chad and Sullivan on that third and long that gave which, him that, that, was first down, that was which, bullshit. That was bullshit. But that that's the rule. That's though. the rule. That's a, that's a flag. He had plenty of time to pull up and just touch. Did he? Him. Did he? Because they said Jared yes. Goff slid late, bro. Like I don't know, man. I, if that's I, I, Cousins I and he gets hit, yeah. and we don't get that flag. We're gonna be saying, "Well, Kirk Cousins is disrespected because yeah. everybody else would have got." Yeah. That's. It, we can talk about the rule, and maybe it's overcompensating right. for player safety, but that is the rule. Shannon Sullivan did have enough time. I mean, yeah. he hit him in the shoulder. I'm it's off not of like Shannon Sullivan. I'm yes, off. I am too. But yeah. no, that's that's a proper call. I'm sorry. It is. Yeah, so, I'm off. Shannon so, Sullivan pissing me off lately, man. Him, <laughs> him, Cameron buying him with one game. You want to be a superstar. Next game, you want to be a fucking you know yeah, dumpster fire. Like, I can't. Game. I can't have all that inconsistency, man. But, you either know I, how to play or you don't. Like straight outside up. of those plays, obviously the third down, late third down throw to Panay Sewell for the first down that wrapped up the game ultimately. Um, and then I'm going to throw it in there that Justin Jefferson play that should have been a touchdown mm -hmm. that would have saved us about 30 to 45 more seconds in the game yeah. to where, you know, depending on, you know, Who knows? decisions yeah. and stuff, you don't know that could have changed the outcome of the game, but I'm not going to say that play changed the outcome of this game, but there was at least three plays, four plays throughout this game that were game changing plays that we could have did better on, that we need to do better on. And that <laughs> Shandon Sullivan, that's not letting an offensive tackle catch a fucking third down pass for a first down. <laughs> Like it's yeah, like fuck Shannon Sullivan, yo. Like for real. And then and then TJ Hawk. I'm glad Joey, Joey, two times. You funny as shit. That boy say y'all 10 and 3 tank question mark. Like facts, come on. Man. Oh, he didn't. Yeah, he did. All right. But um, yeah, like hey, Hawkinson, though. I ain't gonna lie, man. Hawkinson disappointed me on that drop. He I mean he bounced back though with a mm -hmm. nice little third down catch on the next drive on the following drop. But still, man, you got to make those catches, bro. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. have to make those catches, man. Did he have a fumble today, too? Nah, he didn't. Well, at the fumble. very end when they were doing the hook and lateral he oh okay so it, it wasn't meaningful it was the last yeah. play of the game and it did it okay. that that drop was meaningful man I, yes. I mean i was a third down conversion that we could have i mean you were wide open i mean you already yeah. had your, your feet down i mean come on dog grab that yeah. ball man he, i mean he had six receptions for 77 yards and he yeah. had a couple you know good Good catches throughout. He had a couple good catches. Like, I mean, it, it's just though, like, it takes away from the plays that could have, like you're saying, man, turning points of the game, though. You know, like mm -hmm. those these plays we're talking about are are big turning, but that third down was big. You know what I mean? We were we were marching. We could have been that that could have turned into a good drive, you know what I mean? Cause we need yeah. 
we need to take advantage of every little thing we can take on offense. I know we say our team is built on the offensive side of the ball, but when the offense is out there and we don't have the lead, I am not confident at like, or if we have the lead and we're out there, I'm mm -hmm. not confident at all. Like if we're up by seven and they're punting us the ball and I see Kirk Cousins running out there, I know for a fact that we're going to go three and out at some <laughs> point. We are not scoring a touchdown. So at some point we're going to, we're going to punt the ball back to them. Now, if they come down and score a touchdown, then we'll go out there and we'll go back down field and score a touchdown. I don't get that, bro. That's the one thing that's just aggravating me right now. Yeah. Like, I don't know why. It's aggravating me. It's, it's really like they have to be behind the eight ball. And they have say, to oh, be. You know? It's so. like, why? Why? <laughs> I just don't get why you can't have oh, that type no. of play calling when we're winning. I don't get Ru that. Like, you know? Russ, what's up? Side note, Russell Wilson just got, like, murdered right now. Ooh. Oh, he down? Yeah, like he's like two a down, like he's wobbling. They got it, they're helping him off. Like, oh wow, damn, yeah, it's all bad. They actually came back in this game, they're down 13 again, they're at the one yard line. But, um, and then, then I'll give you guys score at Bates too. 49ers are up 35 to, to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that game is over. You um, know, why can't we do that? And then Seattle actually got back in the game against Carolina. They're down 17 to 20 right now. If Seattle loses that game, Detroit's only Detroit's really Detroit's in the game. Only a game out of that last seed in the playoffs. Seattle's going to win that game though. That's and they game. have tiebreakers over Washington and New York. I text and real quick, SK and Day. I text Dave earlier during the game when I seen that the Eagles were smashing the New York Giants. And I said, bro, I envy how the Eagles handle business, bro. Right. And you know what? Yeah. And I sit back and I say that because I'm I'm cool with Eagles content creators, man. I actually respect them. They're not the Cowboys. I actually I don't have any problems with it. I might not like them as a team when we're playing them, but yeah, I know SK, you feel different. You hate the <laughs> Eagles. But look, my thing is this though. They handle business how a good team should handle business and I should. envy it. Yeah. I fact. envy it because we should be doing the same thing. Like these guys go into every game and it's never, oh, well, we're playing Daniel Daniel Jones and we got to worry about Daniel Jones and Saquon Barton. No, they know they're going to go in there and stomp on a team. And when they get up by 14, they're like, that's not enough. We need to go yeah. up by 28. We need to go up by 35. And, they, and they've been smashing teams lately, man, at the right time. And that's going to be our problem going into the playoffs. The Eagles definitely... As if they stay healthy, I'm telling you right now, they're like the Alabama of the NFL right now. I mean, it's just facts. I got to give them their props, man. I know you don't like to hear that, SK, but I mean, the Eagles, they they the real deal, man. They really are. Don't 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 crown them yet. I and ain't here, crown here, them yet, but they the real here, deal, man. Here's why I say this. Look, blowing out teams throughout the entire season is amazing. It's great. You got to right. give that team credit. But when the playoffs roll around, and things get sticky and they get a little tighter and you're in these tight games in the fourth quarter that you don't have very much experience with throughout the regular season you're not ready for that moment yeah and the, and this is the one thing outside of us having a 10 and 3 record and obviously you know going to the playoffs and having a home playoff game this is the thing that's giving me hope of of me saying you know what yeah it may look ugly and we, we may not be getting credit and we may not be, you know, giving teams ass whoopings like the Philadelphia Eagles are. But again, when it gets to the playoffs and those, those games get tight, mm -hmm. your experience, you've been here before, you've seen every situation possible. You've seen every offensive scheme in this situation before you've seen every defensive scheme in, in this situation before, because you've faced multiple opponents with different schemes, with different offenses, different quarterbacks, running quarterbacks, pocket quarterbacks, three, four defense, four, three defenses. So you've seen it all before, but teams that have just been blowing teams out throughout the regular season they get to these games, and when they're in a tight, crunch time game like that, they don't know how to handle the situation. So I have the hope in this team of we're going to make the playoffs, so we're going to get a home playoff game. And then once we get to these games, now granted, hopefully we don't get upset in the first round, and we're not going to get to that yet. But if we get to a game with the Philadelphia Eagles, if that game is close – I have confidence in our team because we've been there before. Bro, the I'm going to tell you it. right now, SK. I got to say <laughs> this. I just have to, bro. If we run into the Philadelphia Eagles 
I can promise you they are going to Mali. I'm calling it right. They will destroy us. Any and this given is why, Sunday. Bro. Nah, who beat nah. who beat who beat the Eagles? Who's the Eagles' lone loss this year? The, the Commanders, which which is in their division, and they they play them tough beat, almost every year. And we beat the Commanders, right? I'm not saying that makes us better than the Eagles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. You know, they beat the Philly. The Philly beat the Lions last I checked. I think that was that year, was the right? first game of the season too, though. I think yeah, first game of the season. Yeah, that so, was the first game of the season. But I'm telling any, you, SK, look, we match up super bad. Sunday. I know it. I know it's any given Sunday. That's the thing to say. But you know what? I'm telling you right now, some teams or just well coached they have the right personnel and it's it's not any given sunday depending on the opponent they're playing I'll and I'll, I'll and i'll ask you this rap when's the last running quarterback that's made the super bowl yeah it's been a while i mean you can consider patrick mahomes kind of not really no. but kind of right when's the last yeah. running patrick mahomes got some feet he had like 100 yards like that in the super bowl isn't it he's not a mobile quarter he runs when he needs to I, you see, you and Dave say that. I, I disagree. When, I, I think Mahomes last, is a mobile quarterback. When's the last time we've seen a team that has a quarterback that has designed runs for their quarterback make the Super Bowl? Yeah, it's been a while, but you know what? The, 2013. The 2013. Colin Kaepernick. Hey. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Colin Kaepernick. But the outside league changes, that, bro. Out, that's been the only time in history. It's been Colin and Kaepernick. Jalen hurts them. Them boy got them boy got some swag going right now. I ain't gonna lie to no, you. No, he does. He does. But playoffs are a different type of football. It is. Everything yeah. gets t- your butthole gets tighter in the playoffs. Right. But do you think that Jaylen we're do you think we're ready? Do you think we're built for a team no. a game like that? Yeah, no, like I, we can't we no, can't no, even no. win a game today against the Lions <laughs> when we can lock the division up. We're we're built for a game that's close against anybody in this league another reason why i call this a must win because this would be a this is like you said earlier playoff atmosphere we can lock the division up lock the yep. you know i mean lock the playoff spot up and yet keep our we lead on the two seed keep our lead on the two and we can't even win that get we can't win you know what i mean so it just shows me like now next week we'll win why because we got another opportunity to do it but i look yep. at it like y'all should have treated this game today as the playoff game you know, this should yeah. have been the game right here. You know what I mean? Because the Colts are in a whole different, they're in the AFC. I mean, mm-hmm. yes, it matters, but it's like, come on, dog. Like, let, let's get there beating the Lions. We should have got there beating well, the Lions. But that's I mean, what it is. That, Shout out to the Lions, though, man. Now yeah, we, they played a good game. I guess now we have an opportunity to clinch the division at home. Yeah, yeah we do. I mean, yeah. you can you can look for the silver lining cool. in it. Yeah, we can look for the yeah. silver lining. You know what I mean? But I look at it like even if we lose next week, according to Dave's standards, if we lose next week, well, we got four more opportunities. Now we got three more opportunities. <laughs> I'm taught. Nah, 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 nah. It's nah, about nah, the vibe play. of your team, man. Yeah, because that because because that hurts confidence and stuff. We, it, right. you know, you got to get hot at the right moment. And yeah. now's the time. You know yeah. what I mean? Now's the it, time. If we if we let's just say we lose Saturday and we drop two in a row. That's a negative sign at the end of the season going into the play. Like, that is showing that everybody that was calling us frauds, it's coming true. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with that. Because once you drop, I'm, I'm not even going to put it in existence. If you were to drop that game against the Colts, now that sense of doubt starts to kind of linger around. Like, okay, lost the Lions. Damn, yeah. now we lost to the Colts at home. Like, those are two games where we could have clinched the division and we just kind of let it slip through our hands. Now we're looking at the third seed more than likely. Like, so if you So you lose, think Saturday's a must win? I'm going to say it's a must win for the mentality of this Let's go. team. Let's go. I'm, not I'm, gonna getting, say on, I'm the, getting on Dave's ass tonight. Hey, SK, tap in. Tap in. I'm getting on his ass tonight because I'm going to ask him if, tom- if, ne- if Saturday's a must win. And he's going to yeah. come up with this bullshit ass reason. Well, no, it's not really because we have the next Sunday after that. And then we even have next season at the end of the day if we if we're to make the playoffs, too. You know what I mean? So I'm, hey, I'm on his top. Now. Bro. The time is now. Exactly. The time is goddamn now. But. We're going to wrap it up uh, pretty shortly here, guys. Anything you want to... I, pre- I, I just want to thank y'all for letting me vent, man. Thank y'all for letting me vent to y'all, man. I need the ears. You know what I mean? TPC um, Day, I'm sure July. you'll be around tonight, man. You don't want to miss it. Um, I mean, me and Dave are going to argue for like two hours straight. If you want to come in and be the moderator, that's absolutely fine because he's going to need it. He's going to need it. No, I, <laughs> he's going to need it. Okay. Yeah, he's going to need it. Yeah, he's going to <laughs> yeah. need it. Yeah, okay. 
<laughs> I don't know. You all might have to give me a raise on my marriage counseling. Team. You guys are going at it in, in each other's chats. I don't even know what it's going to be like being in the same room. I love that. that. I love Dave, man. I love all y'all, though. I just be bullshit. <laughs> to a couple points you made before, SK, when you're talking about, well, Philly might tighten up if they're in a close game. If they're playing us, they have the mentality of, we're not going to let it be a close game in the first place. Mm-mm. And to, well, to, to Rap's point about how we just don't match up with them. I don't think that that battle testedness would matter in a game against Philly because, you know, they would just be rock, running all over us in the first place. But circling back to defensively, when I was talking about Kirk Cousins making the tackle, um, let's just call for what it is. You know, Jerry Burns had a big line one time is, uh, you know, you got to get big plays from your big knockers. And the big knockers did not show up today. Zadarius Smith, one tackle. Daniel Hunter with two sack, uh, tackles. The Vikings did not sack Jared Goff once. So mm. we can circle back to all the things we talked about. Oh, Tampa Bay just scored. Now they're only down four touchdowns. There you go. Um, <laughs> whip we, we circle- Say what? I said whip de do. Yeah, whip de do is right. <laughs> How's Purdy um, playing? Real quick, um, SK. The day were you watching the game? Or Purdy's, just- Purdy's playing pretty good, man. That's the thing, man. I, that, believe it or not, dog. Real quick, San Francisco has the type of offense where you can just plug and play any quarter. It don't even matter. Yep. Like me, it. you, and SK can be the quarterback for the for the San Francisco 49ers, bro. I fucking hate it, man. I despise it. I really <laughs> do. I really fucking do. Me too, man. But um, but yeah, but I'll man, just say, like, I'll just leave my, my point on by saying this. There's there's too much going on right now. If this team wants to be listen, my expectations coming into this season were the in order for this to not be a failed season, you needed to get to the division around of the playoffs. And recently yep. I've upped that to say if you get to the division round of the playoffs and you lose, you know, that's not, I mean, going into the season, you could say that was success, but now you can't. And the points were about must wins or not is if you have the two seed and you win your wild card game, then San Francisco or whoever else makes it out of the wild card round is coming to your house. This team against San Francisco on the road, forget about it. Oh yeah. Forget about it. Forget, forget, about forget about it. If we play San Francisco, bro, like I'm not even gonna watch that game. That game gonna be over quickly, quickly. Bro. Mm, I wouldn't say that. Okay, I'll just say it like this: SK, You gotta run SK, off the rest of these SK, games. You're you're the, two SK. All right, so so the playoffs. Let me. All right, before we, I know you ready to wrap this up, SK. But look here. So during the season, you fear like Washington Commanders and you know the 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 Detroit Lions, which yet yeah, rightfully so they beat us today. They beat us. Mm-hmm. We gotta give them. They probably they beat us. But then yep. when we get in the playoffs, you you telling me that you're like, well, San Fran, nah, we got that. We good? Like, I don't I'm, get that. I'm, I'm saying that because they have a quarterback that I haven't seen do it before. Yeah. Are they getting – is Garoppolo – he out for the season too, ain't he? he? He's out unless they make it to the NFC Championship. They should have got Baker. Bowl. I say mm. – I called – I say Baker would have been a good move, and this is why. Mm. Because it wouldn't have been leaning on his shoulders. You feel me? Like – they they have the type of offense where you don't have to depend on Baker to just you know be throwing three hundred yards a game. He just needs to make a couple, this, one or two or three maybe decent throws a game. You know what I mean? And then it's the run game to take care of the rest. And this defense. is this is what I compare Baker Mayfield's game this, this past week to. Yeah, that shit was rigged. Cam Newton's comeback game to Carolina last year, where yeah. he had a really good game, his first yeah. game back. Yeah. And then the rest of the year was just absolute dog shit. Yeah. That's how Baker Mayfield's going to finish the season. Yeah, yeah, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I, I don't have any hopes for Baker. I mean, I like him as a guy though. I think he's very yeah. confident. Yeah. You know, you need a, you need him. a guy that's confident like him. that, man, especially he your just quarterback. Sucks. He just He sucks, just he just man. isn't as good as, you know, we thought he was going to be, but I mean, he did pull the Browns out of a place out of a dark place wearing trash bags on their head. You got to realize when he got there, not only did he lift it up because of his skill level was better than what they've ever seen for the most part, but his attitude just lifted up the culture. Right. Like he single-handedly lifted the whole Cleveland Browns culture up and had guys wanting to come play there, like Odell and things like that. So we got to give I, him his props, man. He, I, he's I, would, I would say I would say uh, Kevin Stefanski has something to say to you about that one. Yeah, Kevin Stefanski didn't like him, right? He hated him. <laughs> no, Kev, I think Kevin Stefanski is the one that really spearheaded the. the oh, that's uh, what you think. Yeah, that spearhead did the you kind of that? culture change, yes. and yeah, uh, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, man, I don't know, I don't think Stefanski yeah. don't give off that vibe to me. I mean, he's a decent guy, but we're you see what's happening. He's a I really mean, good coach. He's a really good. He's a he's a good coach, but I don't think he's ready to be head coach material, though. Honestly, I think he should have stayed, man. Maybe yeah. maybe he can learn defense, man. Bring him back. 
be our defensive coordinator. <laughs> you see, like somebody, a smart guy. Somebody, somebody learn defense. Yeah. Come. Hey, hey Stefanski, <laughs> study defense all off season, man. Come back to the purple because you know you're guy. a smart guy, and I think you would be really good at it. Let, <laughs> well, welcome back to the Minnesota Vikings, man. Well, shoot, look, we're ten and three. Yes, sir. We're still on track to win our division. We're still on track to grab that number two seed, although it's got a little bit more tight. Yeah. Make us feel but, better, SK. Make us feel better about this. Look, we got a semi-short week with a Saturday game coming up against the Colts in our house. Reason why we lost this game, we just wanted to clinch the division at home. That's all that was. <laughs> That's all that was. We just want to clinch it in front of our home fans. This is why right? we love SK, man. SK looks at, he's looking for the positive and everything. Yeah, so go ahead. We you know, we got love for the Lions, even though they're in our division. So we showed them some love today. Yeah. We kept them in the playoff race. We made things a little more interesting as far as the second and third seed. We pretty much gave Philly the number one seed today, which is totally yeah, that's fine. out the window now. That's done. That's out the window. It's totally fine, but we're 10 and three. We're in prime pitch position to host the playoff game mm. in US Bank Stadium. I'll be there. Let's be happy about it. I know today sucks. And it's Dallas almost lost, man. Dallas, man, shout out to the Texans, man. Y'all had the game in the back. Did y'all did you see what happened at the end of that game? SK? I watched it. I mean, oh, literally, bro, y'all got an interception. Y'all are on like the one yard line, bro. And you're already up yeah. by three. All you have to do is score a touchdown, man. That's Couldn't it. Do it. You QB go for it on it. fourth down and don't get it, and then Dak just drives all the way down the field, and they they beat y'all, man. Come on, man. Come on. Poor Texans. Poor, Poor Texans. Texans. But that'll wrap it up for us, guys. It's your boy, SK. I'm here with Justin Day and my guy, Rap. Unfortunately, Vikings fall to the Lions 34-23. to But, again, like I said, we got a game on Saturday morning against the Colts in U.S. Bank Stadium. Mm -hmm. let's recover man let's recover yes. let's clinch this goddamn division and let's get ready for these damn playoffs so this is the purple code post game reaction again with your boy sk rap and justin be sure to follow us on all social social media platforms slap that subscribe button on youtube follow us on twitter at the purple code one and subscribe to our facebook page the purple code backup page and obviously follow us on uh, TikTok and Instagram at The Purple Code. So, so, again, thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks for coming in, buddy. Peace. I'll let your boy.